Can you see my screen? Yeah, I also yes. got a message. Recording is in progress. I got a message like that. Uh, I don't know why I am not able to screen my own. I'm not able to see my own screen. Uh, just a second, please. It says lecture one four one one four. Yeah, I know. Uh, but usually I see my screen. I don't know. I am not screen. Screen. Hold on a second. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Okay, maybe it's working or maybe it's okay. All right, let's do. Just a second, I thought I had a different uh, version of it. Hold on a second. All right. Sorry for the delay. Asman Guru Bhyor Maha, Asman Parma Guru Bhyor Maha, Asman Sarva Guru Bhyor Maha, Shri Krishna Parabrahmanayana Maha, Shri Lakshmi and Simha Parabrahmanayana Maha, Shri Lakshmi Hayavadana Parabrahmanayana Maha, Sarvam Shri Krishna Pranamastha. Okay. So what we have here is, uh, we have done uh, two bhashas and we are given an overview. Do you remember that I shared this slide before? Anybody? Yes, Krishna. So you remember that I have shared this slide, right? Before? Yes, Krishna ji, couple of times. <laughs> couple of times, okay. Sure. Yeah, now we are just trying to get the, our um, you know, GPS signal, right? Where we are. <laughs> we just have to figure out what we understand. So, in Advaita, that is the top square there, the top one third, what we're, the main idea is Acharya, Shankaracharya separates thing, reality into Atma and Anatma. And for Shankaracharya, everything other than Atma is Anatma and unreal. However, all activities occur in this unreal state. So, Karma, Bhakti, all these processes occur and give realization to spiritual realization to people and they will attain Atma Sakshatkara or Brahma Sakshatkara. That's what we understand from Shankar Bhasha. And that is the general trend in the entire Shankar Bhasha and everywhere Shankaracharya justifies his stance. In the Vishishta Advaita, what they do is there are three entities. Initially, one has to first attain Jivatma Sakshatkara. And to attain Jivatma Sakshatkara, you need the processes of Karma, karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga. Both these give, give you a result. And the result is realization of the Jivatma, your own self. And then starts the Bhakti Yoga. So the Bhakti Yoga begins there. And uh, what do you talk? What do you say about this samanya bhakti? Samanya bhakti is very little bhakti. Going and you know singing. Uh, it depends. If a great acharya or alvar goes and sings in front of uh, a deity or something, that may be the highest bhakti. It could be the bhakti of the great sages, saints. But ordinary people may not feel that level of bhakti. So people who are ordinary, who just go to temples and maybe even cry there in front of something like that, if they are not at the highest, they are at the lower level bhakti, that is known as the samanya bhakti. So the real bhakti yoga begins later for Ramanuja Acharya. That is the bhakti yoga. And that, and that starts after Jivatma Sakshatkara and leads to Paramatma Sakshatkara. This is what is the essence of the Ramanuja Bhashya. Now, if we look at Dvaita, what Dvaita says is karma, jnana, 
bhakti and all can occur in the jnana stage yes we don't know the um, we don't know at this point we don't realize the lord krishna we don't realize our own self that is fine karma and jnana and bhakti work together right in the state and in, in the state of true, true realization the true nature of bhakti comes forth towards hari so our bhakti becomes more stable and clear when we realize and what is the state of realization we are constantly doing more bhakti yoga there the bhakti yoga is nitya bhakti process is nitya eternal constantly there will be difference between the seeker and the, what is sought and also the matter which is all real so the real, there is no question of unreality reality has different everything is a state of real uh, real only everything is real here in the state of agnana we don't seem to know don't understand shri hari in the state of gnana we understand shri hari depending on uh, depending on our capabilities we realize shri hari there he only talks about hari right hari is the only word uh, madhvacharya uses it's not shri hari is more like a vishishta advaita no? right so people realize hari based on their capabilities to the extent uh, they can understand and the higher level beings like vayu brahma rudra devatas and all they understand they realize hari more clearly than the lower level entities lower level beings that difference is there in dvaita so this is the general idea of dvaita any questions on sorry this to, krishna sorry to interrupt i think uh, somebody has put a message to you i saw uh, some message let me check please uh, sorry uh, swami what is that not live on youtube uh, okay yes i am record uh, recording okay this on my computer i could not uh, i could not uh, upload live i will up, upload this later after the class sorry maybe you know uh, let me do one thing let maybe i'll just go uh, just a second give me a second uh, i know what is happening i'll just uh, give a message to people and we'll get back Okay, I sent a message. Um, let's let me see if I am. Okay, share screen. Now, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, from the current slide. Okay. Any question on this slide? if you know this slide very well that means you know all the three varshas so one question on uh -huh. this slide mm -hmm. uh, sorry the, my uh, mobile may create some problems like some background noise may be there no, no, it's okay clear. no it's okay uh, tell me yeah so my question is in advaita uh, there is no self uh, there is no realization as such like self realization or god realization is it true 
see, it depends uh, how you view it. Uh, from the absolute perspective, there is no bondage, there is no realization, there is no moksha, there is no uh, sadhana, there is no sadhya, there is no effort, there is no goal, right? And from the absolute perspective in, in, in Shankarabhasha. But that, answer, that, that is not true in the, in the Vyavaharika Dasha. In the, in the trans transactional universe, people have to work, people have to achieve. So even the karma, bhakti, jnana, and everything which occurs, it occurs in an environment which is body, mind, intellect. So the thing is, all that occurs is unreal from the perspective of reality, that is Brahman. The whole, everything is inside this Maya. So all efforts, all goals, everything inside is Maya, but verily, uh, there is realization uh, from viewing it from the uh, relative standpoint, right? From the standpoint where we are, where I am, right? Yes, so, uh, the, yeah, yeah. So uh, that means uh, Dvaita is more applicable to the transactional world, uh, transactional world. Yeah, the Dvaita focuses on reality as we perceive here. And everything, and even what they say is reality, even uh, when in the true state, when we achieve realization also, the same continues. The thing, but we will have better understanding of Hari better understanding of our relative relationship. And we get more and more involved in the bhakti and glorify that Lord constantly. Now we are unable to glorify that Lord because we don't understand our dependency on that Hari. We don't understand our utter, total uh, um, state of inability. We are in illusion right now. If they don't call it illusion. They call it Agnana, Aravidya. Thank you. Namaskar. Any other question? Krishna, Krishna one comment here. Uh, according to the, to the question asked, if we take the story of uh, Sukhamarishi, who was always in the state of uh, Brahman, yeah. uh, in the Bhagavatam, somewhere I have read that uh, he, he himself will tell, though he is actually experiencing Brahman, when he thinks of Sri Hari, then he he also has devotion to him. Probably no, there is there is there is a possibility that uh, uh, even in the even though there is a Paramarthika state where he is experiencing Brahman, possible that uh, there is something unique about Bhagavan because of which they do come down to the this thing Vyava Harika and experience him. See uh, what you call. Um, uh, this can be explained in different ways from the Advaita perspective or from the Advaita or Vishishtadvaita perspective, right? So from the Vishishtadvaita perspective or Advaita perspective, what they say is, uh, that is true. So the thing is, the uh, self-realization of the Shukha Maharshi and all is only at a particular level. So the highest realization is not that. So uh, Shukha Maharshi came out and said, uh, okay, I have to go beyond this. And then I have to go to uh, look at the bhakti and then also the aspects of Bhagavata, the greatness of this Lord Hari as, as uh, Krishna, and then achieve the highest level of bhakti. And that itself is goal. And so the thing is, this is the, the, is bhakti the goal? According to the Gaudiya Sampradaya and all, bhakti itself is a goal. That means moksha is not at all necessary, not at all sought, sought after. Right? So, um, from that is the Dvaita perspective. From the Dvaita perspective, yes, the um, at, uh, even though somebody is an Atma Jnani like Sukha Maharshi, uh, he, go, he goes out of the state and then wants the, uh, he enjoys the state of Bhakti. That's, that, that Bhagavata Shloka is very powerful. It, it's there in the first third uh, um, uh, at, uh, in Atma, Ramo, Himunayaha. That is, uh, that is how it starts. Purvant yahaitikim ahaitukim bhaktim, they say. 
So the thing is, even though the Atma Rama, they are very self-satisfied in their own Atma Jnana and Atma Realization, but they want to come down and do uh, causeless, reasonless service, bhakti to that Lord Krishna. That's what the Bhagavata says. So the thing is, um, you know, a true Advaiti can take it from a different, oh, the, what do you call, uh, uh, even though, um, you know, uh, Vishwakar Maharishi was at a particular state, um, he came to a really relative state to perfect his bhakti to get the true jnana of Aikya, right? So even in the Bhagavata, there are, what do you call, when they talk about the four, uh, you know, four uh, uh, types of um, mukti, Salokya, Sarupya, Sayujya, Sarshtita. They also talk about Aikya there. What is Aikya? So these are all arguments from both sides, this side and that side, which we keep on doing it from here. People should stop arguing or thinking like that and go and directly realize it. Do I know what Jivatma is? Do I know what Paramatma is? Can I realize that state here? That should be our goal. Just uh, looking at and, uh, you know, doing gymnastics about Shastras are only indicative to say that we are unable to realize using knowledge of the Shastras. We cannot determine how the, we experience there. How do we experience Brahman? What is higher, Bhakti, Jnana and all? It, this, we are now studying the theoretical aspects. Fine. Dvaitins they say that the true Advaita state is not the final. It has to be only Bhakti. That is Dvaita's view. Understand? Shankaracharya, Shastram will not help you. Shastra is only to point the finger at Brahman and say, go in this direction. And this is this is true for all for all systems. Madhva Charya, Hinkara Charya, Madhva Ramana Charya, they all say Shastra Jnana is only little, right? The thing is, the Kadva Upanishad is so clear. Naya Matma Pravachana in Alabhyaha. By giving lectures, studying about like all these things and giving lectures, that he's not going to find Atma. So there is a practice. This is what case we um, stressed so many times. He says dharma is not just theoretical education. Dharma is the process of spiritually improving through different methods. It could be Nama Sanketna, it could be Bhakti Yoga, it could be Karma Yoga, it, it could be Jnana Yoga. It could be any particular type of different types of sadhanas. And during the, using the sadhana, one has to come. It should be even sharanagati, total surrender to the Lord. And that has to give the person the perfection of life here, where spiritual change occurs. We have to get over greed, come and throw the lobar here. Just theoretical understanding, and I'm, I'm a professor of Vedanta, 10 Vedanta they can teach. What's the use if that person does not achieve Realization here. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Introduction to Mandubhasha. See, I want to finish some portions today. Not necessary that we should, I mean, I want you people to understand. So this is introductory about Mandubhasha, right? This is where we're giving the concepts of Madhavasha. So I want you to all understand, once you understand this concept clearly, all these three bhashyas uh, become very natural to you. Uh, and you don't, you really see the real value in each of these bhashyas, even though there may be differences. Um, you know, I think some people say that, oh, three bhashyas, we can never understand, we'll get confused or something like that. The same people will be talking in three languages. They can talk in Tamil, they can talk in English, they can understand Hindi. How? It's possible. They have to focus. So all of us can understand these three Vedantas very clearly. 
That's my belief. Okay. Now, it's beautiful when I read, you know, there, there was a great person who lived about 100 years ago. His name is Vidyamanya Tirtha, who is also uh, supposed to be from the Palimaru Matha, but he is um, very well known as Bandar Kere Matha. I think these two Mathas fused themselves, but they joined. And uh, this person was very educated, extremely sharp, Shastragnya, uh, Vidyamanya Tirtha from the Madhva Sampradaya. It seems that KSV, my guru, used to meet him. In, uh, he has met him many times in different Sadas or Vakyata Sadas, they call it as conferences and things like that. It was pretty interesting um, uh, times during that time. Incidentally, Bandar Kerem, the same Swamiji's uh, Shishya is Prabhanjanacharya, and he used to teach me Sanskrit when I was in um, high school college. So I recently met Prabhanjanacharya also and then talked to him about it. Just want to let you know. This is just for your information. Uh, he gives a wonderful uh, commentary from a Dvaita perspective, strong Dvaita perspective, right? He says that the true meaning of Bhagavad Gita is like the sunlight, the pure sunlight. It's a gift from the two avatars of Vishnu, that is Krishna and Vyasa. Both of them are like avatars of Vishnu. And this wonderful sunlight and the pure knowledge of Bhagavad Gita was hidden from the hearts of his aspirants due to misleading commentaries which covered up the truth, like how clouds cover up the sun. And when did this all clear up? When the avatar of Vayu, Acharya Madhva, took birth on this earth for this purpose to clarify the real meaning of Bhagavad Gita. Look at how the introduction comes out here, right? That's how that's typical about um, um, you know Madhvacharya um, followers. And this particular Acharya is a very famous person. I think. Just want to let you know. And this introduction is in the book called Gita Saroddhara, which I have mentioned here, uh, which is a link to it's it's in Kannada. So people uh, who know Canada. Uh, can enjoy this uh, this book. It's very well written. Lots and lots of details are given here. So Madhvacharya wrote two works, Gita Bhashya, oops, sorry, the mistake is Gita Bhashya and Gita Tatparya. <laughs> Even here there's a mistake. I messed up. So uh, they, he wrote two books, that is Madhvacharya. And to explain these two books, Jaitirta Acharya wrote Prameya Deepika and Nyaya Deepika. These two are also great uh, explanations of the original um, Madhubhasha, which is very small in nature. It's very, uh, uh, you know, uh, dense in the sense that on, uh, you, it's very, very short, but extremely in-depth. And you cannot understand the Bhasha or the Gita Tatpariya so, so easily. So you need explanation from the Pramaya Deepika and Nyaya Deepika. Just wanted to let you know. The central teaching of Gita, according to Madhvacharya, is very uh, uh, clearly given in a paper. I think I shared that paper to uh, um, paper with you, written by uh, B. N. K. Not B. N. K. Sharma. Uh, I'm forgetting who wrote this. I'll send the name of the person. Uh, that paper is very, uh, very, very well written. It's in English. So what, according to Madhvacharya, duty is absolutely important and depends on who you are. If you are a Kshatriya, you should do your duty. So duty consciousness is absolutely important for, for uh, Madhvacharya. So in the Bhagavad Gita, in the beginning, in the second chapter, in the very, at the very outset, destroying evil is the duty of a Kshatriya. So Arjuna should fight. There is no option. So there are only, so one, one can say, what is evil? Uh, what is good and what is evil? How do you define? define? Madhvacharya's view is very clear. Those who oppose God, that is Krishna, and those who support them are evil. So, so evil are of two types. Those who directly oppose God, Krishna, 
or those who support these people who oppose Krishna. All of them are evil. So obviously Bhishma who supported um, Duryodhana is on the side of evil. One has to do one's duty, not someone else's duty. So Arjuna should not go begging and Arjuna should fight. So what is a duty? Duty, any duty, anyone's duty is actually a dedication to the Lord Almighty Krishna Hari and should be carried out with deep devotion. So Madhvacharya's focus on action is towards deep devotion to the Lord. And every activity that is for dharma should be done with a deep devotion to the Lord, offering everything to the Lord, Hari. One important thing which runs through every verse of the Bhagavad Gita, Bhashya of Madhacharya is, Hari is supreme. Everything else is entirely dependent on Hari. That entirely dependent is very important. We think we are independent, but we are entirely dependent on Hari. Devotion of Bhakti is the highest means to know God. So, Madhvacharya makes it very clear. Is it through Jnana or Bhakti or something? Don't use the word term, term Jnana, even though it may, Jnana may be inside Bhakti, Bhakti is the only choice. The grace of the Lord is necessary, and for that Bhakti is necessary. You are totally dependent, and all you can do is fall at the feet of Hari and ask. So, there is no one who is exempt from doing duty. This is very important. Even if someone gets moksha, according to Madhvacharya, even during, after getting moksha, you will be still working. And it is better for that person to do karmas after getting moksha. Because that will increase the level of bliss the person can get in moksha. So moksha is not, moksha will not take you out of the total dependence on Hari. And Arjuna is not an Agnani, he is not a lower Adhikari, but he is a Uttama Adhikari that is a higher aspirant, higher level aspirant. He is not an entry level aspirant, but a higher level aspirant. This is the crux of the central aspects of Madhvacharya's teaching. It does not summarize everything about the Gita. But it, gi it gives a guideline about how Madhvacharya views the Bhagavad Gita. Any questions on this slide? Um, no, once again. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, one second, please. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. What is, what is the question? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I mean, that point, God is supreme and everything is completely dependent on him. Yeah. Many, many times when I hear uh, Madhvacharya's followers, they claim that uh, Madhvacharya has actually told this. But isn't, 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 uh, isn't it true that uh, Ramanujacharya before him also has actually stated this only, this point? See, there is a lot of similarity between Madhva Bhasha and Ramanuja Bhasha, right? Um, uh, see, uh, Madhva followers think that, um, see, they basically give prominence to the actual dependence, and they don't, um, according to them, see, there are um, uh, works which uh, explain the um, the arguments between Vishishta, Dvaita, and Dvaita. Uh, one of the, what I remember is, um, I think there was a Ahobilamat Acharya a long time back in 16th or 17th century who argued and um, argued against Madhvacharya, Madhva Bhashya, that is Advaita Bhashya. 
and for that uh, there was an answer from uh, Sumadhin, uh, some other uh, uh, Madhva Acharya. And uh, Vijayendra Parajaya uh, is one work there. And uh, somebody answered that. And then there was a counter uh, answers and, and Jalihar Srinivas Acharya, who was another Madhva, wrote another counter argument against it. So these kind of uh, arguments are there. One has to go much deeper to figure out uh, how Advaita and Advaita uh, deal with each other. It's a little bit complicated uh, work in the sense that one has to really focus on details to understand the, the real differences between Madhuvasha and uh, Ramanji Vasha. We will try to understand some of it here. So um, they don't deny that uh, Ramanji Acharya might have said. See, in, one other thing is in the Madhuvasha, you can see direct references to Shankar Bhasha. Uh, Madhuvacharya does not write that, oh, this is what Shankaracharya says or something like that. But Directly, Madhvacharya addresses what Shankaracharya wrote in uh, different places. But Madhvacharya, I don't see direct reference to Ramanuja Bhasha for some reason. Right? Uh, I've th thought about it, but I don't have a good answer at this point. Maybe he did, but I, I don't see it often. I've not come across. Okay. Any other question on this? This slide? Yes, I just uh, had a thought with regards to utter dependence. Um, oh. yeah, was, I, I find it like very logically correct because if Hari was willing in the first place, I wouldn't have been uh, gone into this cycle of birth and death, right? Like, so just because I'm here doesn't it mean that even at the state of moksha, that there is a dependence on Hari. I did not understand, Sudarshanji, I did not understand what you said. The mere fact that I'm here at this point in time uh, means that uh, I'm not in a state of moksha state, right? Like, but I should have been in the beginning. Uh, and then at the beginning, if, if it was in the moksha state, and then and then I'm here now. And so if uh, so doesn't it automatically suggest that like the fact that like everybody is here at this point of time uh, and not in the state of moksha, uh, we are dependent on Hari because he's still in moksha. True, yes. See, this is what and we so, understand, right? This is what I understand. But you know one thing, you, you cannot generalize this, don't you think? The reason is, um, I can, suppose I, I am a true, uh, Advaiti with a lot of uh, realization or something. I might come and say that I'm already in moksha. Say I'm Ramana Maharshi, for example, which is not true, which is never true, I think. But thing is, what would Ramana Maharshi say for your view? He would say, I don't see anything. I am already realized, and all I see is Brahman. I am Brahman, and everything else. Ishwara is there. If you want bhakti, you need to go through Ishwara. And 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 uh, Ramana Maharshi supported. Oh, Krishna is is he is Hari, and uh, uh, bhakti to Krishna is very valuable. That's what he says, right? Surrender to Krishna is extremely important. That's what Ramana Maharshi says. But he says I am already there. So it depends on who you are. Very hard to logically come. You know, you can like, yeah, but, uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't say this against people who are already there, but then, but <laughs> so far, I haven't visually seen any of them making a universe or uh, creating another planet or creating things, right? Like, oh, maybe I don't have bhakti ah, enough to see that way. See, you know, one thing, see, the true in, in a true Advaita thing, right? The, there is no creation. Right? See, you, you got to come away from the Advaita way of thinking when you when you look at this. Here, creation is a, is, is a real process in Dvaita. That is, Krishna he, uh, uses his power to create. And 
de depending on different uh, interpretations, he becomes the universe or he, he brings out the universe from within. But in Madhva Bhasha, he does not become the universe. In Madhva Bhasha, he is always separate. Creator is separate. The creation is separate. The matter is separate. And then Jivatmas are separate. Everybody is separate. So he, in the beginning of the Sarga, he takes all these from within and gives them the power of action, activity, and then gives a relationship with them and the creation story. So, uh, you know, one thing, I think you hit upon a very good point here. For Madhu Vasha also, there are some things which are not created at all. That is, Akasha, for example, in Madhu Vasha is not created. Akasha is there always. They, 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 they say it as Avyakrita Akasha. And the letters of Sanskrit alphabet, the 51 letters, the original Varnas, they were never created. They were always there. In fact, we will talk about it in the next two, two slides, so I don't want to say much about it now. Okay? Sure. sure. Okay. All right. Go to the next slide. Now we come to the powerful verse 216, which is interpreted very differently from different acharyas. I will first tell you what Madhva Bhasha is, is on this verse. Nasato vidyate bhavo, na bhavo vidyate sataha, ubhayora pidrishtuantastanayos So this is the second chapter, 16th shloka. And a simple, uh, uh, you know, I have just used my friend B.K. Giridhar's uh, book on it. He, he wrote an, a good English, English uh, translation of the uh, uh, Gita Vivrithi of Raghavendra Swami, as well as a simple translation of the original verses. So what is the uh, meaning here? No good comes out of bad deeds. No good comes out of bad deeds. So uh, in one, um, one way to look at is, Asat and Sat refer to bad deeds and good deeds. Asat refers to bad deeds. Good, uh, sat refers to good deeds. Na asato vidyate bhavaha. Good, what you call, uh, bad deeds always create bad results. Bad deeds end up in giving you bad things. You will suffer because of bad deeds. No good will come out of bad deeds. Similarly, there are no bad results that result from good deeds. So if you do good, good deeds, you are assured of good results. If you do bad deeds, you are assured of bad results. So the learned people, the seers, tattvadarshis, have realized the Lord Almighty, or can, uh, I realize the Almighty, or the learned seers who have realized the Almighty. There are people who have realized Hari, are convinced about these two facts. That means they don't want to avoid bad deeds and to only do good deeds. If you are not realized, you mistake some activity and might do bad deeds with uh, knowingly or not knowingly. So this is one meaning of this verse. So there is a second meaning give, given to this verse by Sri Rayaru, that is Raghavendra Swami. Uh, he says, Asat it can be say, say it as can be said as inert nature or mula prakriti. Mula prakriti is also asat, is not subject to creation and destruction. So mula prakriti is always there. It is nitya. It is eternal. So it, it does not undergo uh, any creation. So Brahman is also eternal and indestructible. So here this verse refers to two things. One thing is Asat. Asat is Mola Prakriti. That Mola Prakriti is not destroyed or created. And Sat is Brahman. Brahman is also eternal. See here, Nasato Vidyate Abhavaha. Na abhavaha vidyate sataha. So we have to take it in this way. Na asataha vidyate abhavaha. That is, mola prakriti is asat. 
so it will not be destroyed. Vidyate abhavaha. Abhavaha means non-existent. So the mola prakriti is eternal. It is never non-existent. Similarly, sat is Brahman. Brahman is never non-existent. That means Brahman is always there. Asat or mola prakriti is always there. And obey or be understood. The knowledgeable people know the difference and know the essence of these two aspects very well. So this is how um, um, Raghavendra Swami has explained. Now let's go into the direct bhashya of Madhvacharya here. Nitya atma ityuktam, nitya atma ityuktam ki matma hi panitya, aho svid anyadapi, anyadapi tat ki mitya ha nasate iti. So what it is, is Nasaiti. What does it mean? Is Madhvacharya questions himself. Is um, It was said earlier that Jivatma is Nitya. So uh, in the earlier shloka, prior to 2.16, uh, Jivatma is Dehi, de, uh, Dehi, Deha, Dehi is Jivatma, that is Nitya. It was said. So Jivatma is not destructible. Oh, if Jivatma is Nitya, is anything else also Nitya? To explain that, Nasate Vidyato Bhava comes. Nasataha Karanasya Sataha Brahmanascha Bhavaha Na Vidyate. So the thing is, Asat is Karana or cause. So cause is also real and eternal. Sataha Brahmanascha, Sat is Brahman. Brahman Brahma is also eternal. There is no non-existence for Brahman. There is no non-existence for the Asat or Karana. Prakriti hi purushas chaiva nityam kalas cha satyama satyama iti vachana shri Vishnu Purana. So in Vishnu Purana, it should be right, it should be Vishnu Purana. In Vishnu Purana, there is a vachana. Prakriti, that is the mula prakriti matter. Purusha, Purusha is the jivatma. Nityam, Kala is Nitya, that is Kala is time. Time is Nitya. Puran. Pratak Vidyate Itya Ityadarartaha. They are separate. This, these things are separate. Asataha Kananatvamcha Sadasadrupaya Chasau Gunamaya Gunovibhu Iti Bhagavate. In Bhagavata, Asat is said as Karana in this verse. So the thing is, the Asat is the cause of this universe. Asat is pure ma uh, Prakriti. Prakriti. Asataha sadajayata sad yeticha abhyaktescha. So from the asat tat came. Sampradayascha etat siddham ityaha ubhayorapi iti antaha nirnayaha. So Madhvacharya takes everything here, asat and, and sat as asat is prakriti and sat is brahman. That's how he takes it. And this is very clearly known by the right people in the right sampradaya. Now contrast it with Shankar Bhasha. So till now what, what we said is um, uh, Madhu Bhasha only. Now contrast it in Shankar Bhasha. Why am I bringing, bringing this Nasato Vidyate Bhavo uh, of Shankar Bhasha? We don't need to really go through it, right? But if you don't go through this, you will, and if you don't understand Shankar Bhasha very clearly, you will not understand the context of Madhu Bhasha properly. Here, Focus properly. This one is important. Okay, this Shankar Bhasha, um, how it takes as Nasato Vidyate Bhava, we need to really understand properly. We have gone through this before, but I'm just reminding you. Nasataha Vidya Manasi Shitoshna Shitoshna Dehe Sakaranasya Navidyate Nasti Bhavaha Bhavana Mastita. So, the thing is, Shita, Ushna, and all these ups and downs, the dual, dualities of nature, right? Asat is na asataha 
asartah he takes it as avidyamanasya non existing what are these non existing shita ushnadi shita and ushna is what is shita shita is cold ushna is hot pain uh, pleasure all these dualities sakaranasya with all the the very cause of this navidyate nasti bhava bhavana masita it does not exist there is no true existence of these things like hot cold pain pleasure and all shankaracharya goes further nahi shitoshna di sakaranam pramar pramana hi nirupyamar vasu sambhavati so this thing is anything like uh, cold hot and all however it is explained in with pramanas they don't exist vikaro hi saha they are only vikaras or transformations vikaras chapya bicharati the vikaras always change it once it once it is hot once it's cold once it's pain once it's pleasure the all these are different states which keep on changing yatha gatadi samstanam chakshushva nirupyamanam vrudya tirekena anurup anupalapte asat tatha sarvo vikara can you imagine a pot without the mud can you imagine a pot without the lump of clay which was used to make that pot no so because you cannot imagine this ghata or any pot or anything without the karana or mud so if you think about any thing which is at, which cannot be understood without without the karana then it has to be just a transformation vikara and uh, that vikara is always asat anything that transforms and cannot be understood without the cause is asat non existent so shankara bhashya's definition of non existent is not exactly what you and i think i was very um disturbed confused when i read this uh, 2.16 shankar bhashya sometime i think in 1986 or 87 that's when i read Sh- shankar bhashya's first time this verse i had understood it before earlier my acharya had taught me earlier uh, you know prior to 1981 but that's when this hit me how can i say if somebody pinches me i feel it if i feel it i feel the pain how can i say it's non existent i can't if somebody cuts off my skin using a using a you know blade or something it pains i cannot say pain doesn't exist but shankaracharya says pain does not exist it is all asat wow what a powerful statement difficult to understand let us see what shankaracharya says here okay now go through the shankar bhashya clearly that which cannot be found as different from the source karana which is lump of clay is asat so whatever which is cannot be found without the karana then it is asat only all effects do not seem to be different from its source karana and they are all asat in a way asat is in, in english they say non existent that's a very poor translation of the word asat that is why don't read english books on this then there is nothing which can be termed as sat then shankaracharya asked oh if everything is the transformation it is an effect of everything right all the thing you see is an effect then there is is there anything which is known as sat says no there is something known as sat for example he gives an ex- uh, you know standard example look at this the spot exists the cloth exists the elephant exists we say different things exist but what is common among all these is the existence so there is something called existence existence is never denied the pot can dry, pot can break up and it can go away but existence does not go away cloth can be burnt and 
you know, the cloth is not there. Cloth doesn't exist, you can say. No, there is existence. Because existence is common to all elements in this universe. Then, existence is never denied. Objects may change, they may come and go, but the existence is there. So if someone, Shankaracharya says, prima facie, he puts a question. If what is broken or lost, then the existence is also lost, right? Yes. No, 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 no. The actual Siddhanta is, according to Advaita, something else exists, right? Cat can exist, a tree can exist. So the existence is something common. So there's something existing, so the existence is always there, but the things can go away. So the definitions are very different to him. So Shankaracharya says, though there is no water in the mirage, we get the feeling that water is there in the mirage. Similarly, this universe seems to exist. It is apparent reality, but not absolute reality. Really speaking, there is only one Brahman or Sat. So what Shankaracharya says in his definition, everything is Asat, which is not Brahman. So everything is an effect of Brahman. Brahman is the Karana, like the mud. And everything which comes out of that Karana, like a pot or a flower pot or a waves or a spoon or a ladle made out of mud or clay. Everything has an effect. The effect is unreal. The Brahman is real. When you say real, don't understand the English real. The English real is different from what he is saying as reality. His, rea his definition of reality is different and you know it. So Shankaracharya continues to say bodies and all the ups and downs, the opposites we find in, the, in our lives, like sadness, happiness, with their sources, how, whatever caused my sadness, whatever caused my happiness, whatever, all of them do not exist. Atman is never non-existent, it's always existent. This is the meaning. This is the truth. That's what the bottom line Shankaracharya says. Yeah, now, Okay, I, I want to go back to the Madhavasya simply just to give a summary here. So Shankara, uh, Madhavacharya says, this doesn't even refer to existence and non-existence. Asat and Sat should not be understood as uh, uh, existence and non-existence. The word Asat is Karana. The, the, the Karana is uh, um, uh, the Mola Prakriti. The, the create the the original state of creation before this universe emerged, and this universe is nothing original. It was Mola Prakriti, and it transformed into this uh, Prakriti, which is nature. Similarly, Sat is Brahman, and Brahman is always real. So, Brahman uh, Brahman uh, Brahman exists, and Brahman is eternal. So is the Prakriti. Prakriti is eternal. Brahman is eternal. So what is the complexity here? Madhvacharya says this should not be understood this way. And this is very, only realized people know this, the truth of these two very well. Okay, now you see that Shankarabhasya and Madhvacharya differ in the very way the world uh, is understood. Sat and Asat are understood differently and that those kind of differences occur even in the Upanishad. Asatva idamagra asi tato vai sada jayata. This is the Upanishad. Asat existed, then Sat came forth. So, interpretation difference in the original versus itself will give different meanings. There is no issue about it. There is no difficulty. There is no need to fight between these two systems. We can understand it in a summary manner, in a, in a you know, balance. We can have a balanced view of it. Okay, before I take up Avinashi to that with the Yena Sarva Midam Katam, Vinasham of Yes 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 Yena Kashit Kartumahati, this verse is 217, I think, 217. So the 216 verse is clear, right? You don't have any doubts about 216, Nasato Vidyate Bhavo, how these two Acharyas differ and why they differ. Do you understand it? 
I stop sharing, make it easier. Krishnaji, I have a question about Brahmacharya's uh, How is it different from Maya? Please, uh, please uh, uh, speak um, louder and closer to louder. your mic, please. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? No, better, okay. Yeah, um, I was just wondering what would be the difference between uh, Shankaracharya's Maya and uh, Madhvacharya's Asat? I don't hear you. You're off. Oh, sorry. Let me let me just change the settings here. Give me one second. Uh, can you hear me better? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, so I was just wondering, what would be the difference between uh, Shankaracharya's Maya and Madhvacharya's Asat? Uh, and Madhvacharya's? Uh, Asat, the, the one that he's talking about, about all the creation and everything else, right? Like that, that um, uh, at the beginning of the Asat, uh, Nasato Vidyate Baba. See, see, the thing is, in this verse, you will not find that, uh, that the answer to your question. In this verse, Asat means Karana. For Madhvacharya, Asat is Karana, the, the cause. The cause is Mula Prakriti. Matter yeah. comes out of Mula Prakriti. So for him, he is not discussing Maya theory at all here. Like the, um, the Maya theory it, will be discussed eventually by Madhvacharya in uh, in different places of Bhagavad Gita. But a work he wrote a separate work called Maya Vada Khandana, where he discusses Maya theory in depth. But here you cannot find it. It's just that Prakriti is the curse and it is eternal for uh, for um, Madhvacharya, and he does not address the Maya theory at all here. Um, like, um, uh, I was just thinking about uh, where in the work called Tattva Bodha, uh, Maya is also considered as eternal. Maya is also the uh, Trigunatmika and all those kind right. of things, which fits into what is Prakriti, right? Like, but yes. doesn't Maya and Prakriti yes. are the same? What yes. I was thinking. You're true. You're right. You're right. So the same thing which is in front of us, the tree, the, the, you know, the, the, the roads and the concrete and everything, one theory says that this is Maya, and the other person says this is Prakriti. Just yeah, that's what. Prakriti. That's why I'm seeing both are the same. <laughs> is <both> from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The world, the world experience is not different just because uh, you belong to two or three different uh, systems of thought. <laughs> At the end of the day, when you come out, if it's cold, it's cold. The snow is cold. Winter is cold. Yes. Whether you are a Dvaitya, Advaitya, Vishnu Dvaitya, that doesn't change. You can call it Maya, you can call it uh, Prakriti. Okay. So I, th I thank you, Krishnaji. Uh, that's what my mind was uh, saying. Like, okay, it sounds exactly like Maya when he's describing Prakriti. Now, where is the difference is what I was thinking. Yeah. So. so the thing is, um, you know, uh, if you understand it in that light, you don't see the difference. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions before I start sharing the next verse? What is the time now? 9.37. We can go for a few more minutes or is it already too late? We started at 8.38 or something like that. I think one hour now. Okay, um, let me see if this verse is complex. If it's complex, we will take it in the next, next class, but we'll see. Uh, where is the share screen? Uh, it's interesting words. Okay. Shankara, this is an important verse. Let us finish this, okay? Uh, it says, whatever is um, unlimited, not limited in time, we're in space. That is, desha is space, infinite in space. That is, unrestricted in space. That is nityameva, that, is, that has to be eternal. Veda di anyadapi ityaha vinashito. Also, there are other things which are eternal, like Veda. Veda is eternal. 
Napi shapa dena vinasha ityaha vinasham iti. So even if somebody curses, even if a very powerful rishi curses, these entities will not stop existing, will not get destroyed. They are eternal. What are these entities? The one which is all pervading. Brahman is all pervading. Brahman will never uh, cease to exist. No one can cause the destruction of the imperishable. This is the idea of this Avinashita Tadvidhi Yena Sarvamidam. Now let's take the comments here. Uh, the entities referred to are not subject to decay. What are these? Uh, Mola Prakriti is eternal, Brahman is eternal, right? We already talked about it. There are other entities. What are these? That is Hari, individual souls, the space or the Vyakrita Akasha, the 51 letters in Sanskrit alphabet, uh, they are all eternal. And even the space, which is Abhyakrita, is space is known as Abhyakrita Akasha. That is same, same space is same as Abhyakrita Akasha, as it does not undergo, undergo transformation during creation or dissolution. This is very interesting, right? In uh, there are there is a verse in the Vedas called Tasmat Atmana Akasha Sambhutaha. Akasha comes from Atman. The Akasha is an effect of Atman in the Vedas. But in Madhvacharya says Akasha is always non-created, neither is it destroyed. It is single, eternal, and self-supporting. This is Avyakrita Akasha is. So uh, Madhvacharya takes it slightly differently. Hold on a second. Is this a different verse here? Okay, yeah. This is a different verse. This, so the, here, the Avinashitu Tadvidhi, that Tad word is not a single entity for Madhvacharya. That Tad means all the set of all entities, which include the Hari, include Hari, individual souls, Avyakrita Akasha space, and the 51 letters in Sanskrit alphabet, and also the Vedas. So these are all included in a, in a bag called Tath. In that bag, all these entities are eternal. Dhyena Sarvamidam Tatham. I don't know how he explains Dhyena Sarvamidam Tatham. Vinasham Avyasyasyana Kashit Kattumati. This Yena Sarvamidam Tatam is not well explained here in this particular verse because you, you need to see a couple of other. Um, why don't we take up that in the next time? So, this is a little bit of a question mark because this has to be explained. Yena Sarvamidam Tatam, what pervades everything? Uh, know that entities that pervade the universe will not perish. So, Prakriti, uh, so let's, let's try to understand this better uh, next time. Uh, I don't have details here. Actually. So if you don't have any questions, we'll stop here. Any questions? Uh, I mean, here, uh, as you told, uh, word that the five things are packed here. In the two point, previous shloka, 2.16, do we have to understand Sat also similarly? Sat also similarly means what? I mean, there in the explanation, it is equated to Supreme Brahman. Correct. But uh, so he, there also we have to, because based on the context, uh, I was thinking why he has not included the Jiva over there. So there, maybe we uh, have to. I mean, in, in, in uh, Nasato maybe, Vijayate Bhavo, right? See, yes. in the, uh, you're, you're right. The, in the Nasato Vidyate Bhavo, there, there the Karana as Prakriti is only taken, right? And uh, in the Sat, I think you should include Jivas and all the other, J Jiva, Brahman, uh, everything. But unfortunately, Prakriti also comes as eternal, right? See, there, you cannot take it in this way at all, because there, the separation has cause and effects. That's what they're saying. Uh, Brahman, not even cause. There, Prakriti is Asat. Mula Prakriti is Asat. 
And that's, in a way, it's a cost, actually. That's not the way uh, Acharya takes them. Madhva Acharya takes it as, it's just Mula Prakriti. And that is eternal. And Sat is Brahman, that is eternal. Here, Avinashitutat Viddhi Yena Sarvamidam Tatam. See, we need to go a little bit more detailed into the Bhashya to see how they uh, take these two verses. Yes, there is a difficulty in understanding because here, this Tat is all-pervading. And is that only Brahman here? Is that Brahman? If it is Brahman, Avinashi, Avinashi to Tat Oh, oh, you know one thing. You look at the sentence. Avinashi to Tat Viddi, Yena Sarvam Vidam Tatam. See, the two is Pakshabhyavarti. Um, for that matter, Brahman is Avinashi, imperishable, or, you know, uh, he is also all pervading. And nobody can cause uh, destruction of this Brahman. So here refers to that Brahman, obviously. Similarly, there are other uh, uh, eternal entities like Veda uh, and uh, Jivatmas and uh, things like that. So I think he is, he is meaning in that way. Let me clarify this next time. It, they're definitely good questions. These two verses are a little difficult for, to understand um, from this perspective. Let, let me ch check and let you know, okay? All right then, I'll yes, stop here. Any, any questions? Was there a question? Hello? Well, okay, I'll stop there. Thank you, sir. Namaskaras.